Saturday mornings are for sunbathing. Olive, right? Olive loves to sunbathe. And as you see, that was actually a exercise ball that Brad and I got. And she wanted to play with it. It's kind of like a soccer ball that we could throw around. And uh, she wanted to play with it, and now it looks like a bowl. <laughs> we were thinking maybe we could start putting her treats in there or something silly, but she just wants to lay in the sun. Her theme song is Soak Up the Sun by Cheryl Crow today. Hello, it's Michelle with Books, Cause, Insomnia. I'm here to talk to you about the books that I just finished and what I'm reading next. I read The Color Purple by Alice Walker. In this book, we follow a woman named Celie from the time she's a teenager all the way through until she's an older lady. I'm not sure how old she is at the end of the book, but it her kids are, are full grown and that kind of thing. So she's she says that she's old, but I don't know what she considers old. <laughs> I don't want to give away a whole lot about this book in case you haven't read it or in case you haven't seen the movie. But Celie goes through a lot of abuse as um, a teenager and then she gets married to Albert and Albert continues to abuse her. This book is about abuse and overcoming abuse, what abuse can do to a person, what abuse feels like. And in this book, she finds healing through the abuse with her relationships with other women, with uh, a lady named Shug and with her sister. It really highlighted for me how acclimated we can get to our lives. Even if our lives aren't very good, how we can figure out a way to get used to it and to get comfortable with it and what a struggle it is to stand up and say, you know what, I'm not okay with this. I deserve more. I'm going to make sure that my life is the way I want it to be. And the stick to and the strength that it takes to do that. The book also highlights character growth. The characters that I think grew the most were Celie and her husband, Albert. I found this book to just be so consuming and emotional and healing and beautiful. And it really did get me thinking about the pain that men can afflict and the kind of healing that women can find with other women. The understanding that women can have with other women. It was just so near and dear to my heart and I really cherished the book. I give it five stars. Um, I did watch the movie right after finishing the book and I used to watch the movie a lot when I was a kid with my mom. It's something that we found very healing and it was the kind of movie that we loved to watch when we needed a good cry and I still feel that way about the movie. The movie is a little bit different than the book in certain ways but for the most part I thought it did a really good job of depicting what the book was about. One of the people that I speak with on Instagram had mentioned that the book after this one is really good as well. And that one is called The Temple of My Familiar. And apparently that one is about, I think, Celie's daughter or granddaughter. And I'm really hoping to get my hands on a copy of that soon and read that. I hope that I feel the same way that I did about this one. And it's just so interesting to me how different our lives can be from other people's, but how we still, at the heart of it, have some similar struggles and we still can connect in certain ways. And I just felt so much connection with Celie. I also read The Banned Bookshop of Maggie Banks by Shauna Robinson. This book is about Maggie. Maggie is someone who has a hard time keeping a job. She kind of moves from job to job, which I can relate to that. That's how I was in my 20s. She ends up telling her friend, Rochelle, that she will help her. Rochelle is a co-owner of a bookshop and she needs to go on maternity leave. So she offers to go stay with her and work at the bookshop while she has her baby and has those few first months with her baby after the baby is born. This book takes place in Bell River. And Bell River is a 
town that is a historical town and it centers around, I think his name was William Bill, right? This book really felt like a cozy book. It was kind of a mystery. It doesn't say that it's a cozy mystery. It just kind of felt like a cozy mystery to me. There wasn't any murder or crime or anything, but there was a lot of lying and a lot of trying to change things. So Maggie finds out very quickly that this town is so about the past that it doesn't have a lot to do with the current world we live in or anything past the historical era that the town is about. And she starts getting this passion for books and starts falling in love with books. And that I found very endearing. I think we can all relate, right, to loving books and how the love of books can connect us, even if we don't like the same kinds of books, just being a book lover can make us feel a connection with people that also love books. And so she decides that she wants to make this bookshop one that sells more recent books. And it kind of turns into this big whirlwind of drama and her trying to change things and make them more modern. And the guy that owns everything in this town pushing back against her. It was very charming and sweet. And at times it didn't feel very realistic. And at times I got a little bit tired of hearing about the guy that owned the town and how he reacted towards everyone. And even the history of the town, it, it didn't really go in depth with the history, but it just got kind of exhausting hearing about the history and how much it was affecting everybody in the town now, as far as having to live, <clears throat> having to only really talk about history and not anything modern. Not that it's not interesting. It just got kind of tedious after a while. But it was a fun book. It was an enjoyable book. I do recommend it. It's a, a nice palate cleansing kind of book. And I gave it three stars. Up next, I wanted to listen to a book. I thought a historical fiction might be kind of nice. And the one that I chose is The Third Mrs. Galway by Deirdre Sinnott. This book takes place in 1835. There's a woman named Helen who has just got married and she's apparently her husband just lost his wife, the first Mrs. Galloway. So she's now the second Mrs. Galloway, which already sounds kind of, is this like a Gothic horror or something? I, I don't think it is. I think it's just a historical fiction, but it sounds very intriguing having this first wife, and, and what that might mean to a second wife. Does she have to live up to her? Is she expected to do different things that she did? Or is she expected to not do different things that she didn't do? That whole thing, what are the rules? And I'm sure back then it wasn't really explained to women what was expected before they got married, when it's probably out of convenience and not out of love. And Helen finds two slaves that are runaway slaves hiding uh, somewhere on the property and she's torn with trying to decide if she should tell her husband or not because she wants to help them and she doesn't know if he'll want to help them as well. It takes place in upstate New York and it's 1835 so slavery was still legal so I can see the conundrum that she is facing here not knowing her husband very well and how he'll react, but wanting to help these people. So I'm, I'm hoping this will be pretty juicy and pretty good. And I'm looking forward to learning more about the history of that time. I decided that the book I want to reread this month should be something really lighthearted and fun. If I'm listening to a historical fiction book that is probably going to be very heavy and very sad, so I decided to reread Double Love by Francine Pascal, which is the first book in the Sweet Valley High series. If you're not familiar with this, this series follows Elizabeth and Jessica Wakefield. They are identical twins 
and I think they live in Southern California. They're Valley girls. Jessica is very popular and conniving and popular. I think she's a cheerleader, you know, that whole thing. And Elizabeth is a more, more of a, a, I think a bookworm, if I remember correctly, and someone who's really into her studies. And I think she's on the school newspaper, if I remember correctly. So she's really about academics and learning. And Jessica's the exact opposite. Jessica cares more about fashion and makeup and boys. But Elizabeth has a crush on this guy named Todd, who's the star basketball player. And who does Jessica decide that she likes but Todd? And that's what this book is about, is that, hi, Olive, do you want to come up? Come on, come on. <laughs> I'm sure everybody wants to say hi to Olive, huh? There she is. There she is. This book is about the two twins struggling with both liking the same boy. Who's going to get this boy? Is it going to be Elizabeth, the one who never has a crush on anyone? Or is it going to be Jessica, the one who changes what boy she likes from week to week? I know I absolutely loved this book growing up. I know I read it quite a few times. I don't know if I'm going to feel the same way about it now. I'm assuming it won't be anywhere near as good to me now as it was in junior high and high school. It's 182 pages long, so it should be a pretty quick read. And hopefully it's enjoyable enough to get through. Like, I'm kind of worried that it might <laughs> be superficial to the point of not being entertaining. We'll find out. Hi, it's Michelle <laughs> and Olive. She's so excited, so excited to be here. It is Friday and it's after work. We haven't decided exactly what we're doing tonight, but I think we're going to have one of those fun nights where we do a pizza night at home and watch a movie that we rent on demand. <laughs> Maybe make some popcorn. Ooh, what do you think, Poppy? Does that sound good? Hang out with Olive. <laughs> That's the good thing about doing it that way is she can come with us. Whereas if we went to the theater, she couldn't come with us. And I don't know what we're doing the rest of the weekend, but I'm just feeling so much better. And I'm excited to live life a little bit again because I've just been so low key for so long. Huh? Yeah, it's been too much. Did you fight? <laughs> I wanted to give you an update on the books. Um, I got 27% of the way into the, the third Mrs. Galloway. I think I was calling it the second Mrs. Galloway. I don't know why it's called the third Mrs. Galloway. I hadn't figured out where the first one came from. I know that there's the current wife and then the wife that passed away, but who's the other one? Is it maybe the guy's mom? I'm not sure. But at 27%, I decided to DNF it. I think after reading The Color Purple <laughs> and a few other very dark, bleak, sad books um, this month, I just needed to not read stuff that was that heavy and that dark. And I didn't find this book to be particularly good though. It just felt all over the place. I kept stopping and thinking, wait, what's going on? Wait, who's this? What's What time era is this? Because it felt like it was bouncing around. It felt like there's a lot of characters, but they weren't really, there was no character development. It felt like, it felt like the characters were really flat. And I just couldn't get into it. And I was starting to dread listening to it. And I thought, well, it's time to move on to something else. It just is. 
if you've read it and you thought it was amazing, let me know. I can always give it an, another, I can always give it another try later, but right now it's just a no-go. <laughs> As you see, I have a puppy on my lap. And <laughs> my note about the next book that I just started maybe 20 minutes ago is, I think it's called The Change. I'll put a picture up here. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Uh, it's by Kirsten Miller. You're probably looking at the cover laughing at me. It said, Pretty Little Liars meets The Witches of Eastwick. And I, I was like, okay, I have to read this book. I don't even care about the rest of the synopsis or anything. I have to read it. Um, I know it's about three women who are all middle-aged going through midlife crises or maybe through the change. I'm not sure. So far, it's it's pretty entertaining and interesting, and I'm wanting to know more. So that's great. I'm not that far in. Maybe 10 or 15 minutes into the book. Hello, it is now, what is it, Saturday, late in the morning. Brad and I drove down uh, to a place to pick up breakfast that we ordered and uh, bring it home to eat it because we wanted to bring Olive with us in the car. With me being sick and Brad working so much lately, we kind of feel like Olive hasn't been able to do as many walks or dog park um, excursions or rides in the car so we're trying to take her out a little more often like we used to before all this stuff happened. <laughs> I finished Double Love by Francine Pascal, and it was a nice escape just going back to um, a simpler time. I'm not going to say things have just definitely changed in some ways for the better and in some ways not, but one thing that's nice is just going back to um, the hyper dramatic world of a teenager and in a way where I can escape social media and internet and all that fun stuff. <laughs> because as much as I can enjoy it, I can also feel overwhelmed by it. Um, I gave this three stars, but I wouldn't say it's like a spectacular story or it's wonderful writing or anything, but it was fun. Uh, especially for nostalgia's sake. I, I think I do want to keep going with the series, though. Why not? It, sometimes it's fun to have a good palate-cleansing book, especially with all of the thriller, psychological uh, thriller and horror novels that I read. Sometimes it's nice to kind of read something that's real lighthearted and just simple. Do you remember how you used to be able to cut this out and send it in and order books that way? I would love to try to do it now, except it says this offer expires 6 of 86. 
it's just one of those fun things that you used to be able to do that you can't do anymore. Gosh, it says, please allow four to six weeks for delivery. We sure are spoiled now, aren't we? I order things online and I think the longest I wait is a week, maybe a week and a half, but usually that's it. And things arrive so fast. If it's longer than a week and a half, it feels like forever. I want to talk to you about the change. I DNF'd it at, gosh, it was only 7%, I think. Um, I, I was multiple chapters in though at that point. And here's the thing. There's quite a few men in this book and they're all horrible, evil, stupid, dumb, awful people. There is not one positive male character. And the women are all these fierce, badass, um, but angry people wanting revenge. And I just, to me, that's just so irritating that I didn't want to keep going. It was, I think, 10 hours of listening time. And I just felt like, gosh, that's, that's a long time to have nails being run down a chalkboard for me. I don't think it's good, nor do I think, like it's very dicey territory to put any group of people into a box and say they're all like this. Can men hurt women? Yes. Are all men bad? No. Like I just, I, I don't like doing that with any group of people. And so when every man in the book is so negative and such a bad character, that's really unappealing to me. There's quite a few men in my life that have been a really positive um, influence or experience. And I, I just can't, can't get behind that. That whole thing about women are these wonderful, fierce creatures and men are way down here and they're awful and they need to be put in their place. And to me, that's super negative, very ugly thought behaviors. And I, I just, I didn't, I don't want to deal with that. Um, my mother had always told me the best way to get revenge on anyone, whether it's a lover, a friend, a boss, whoever, is to be happier without them than you ever were with them. And I really agree with that. I think that that not only is it a great way to get revenge, so to speak, but it's a great way to move on with your life and to forgive someone else for maybe wronging you in some way. But to actually try to hurt someone or to try to tear their lives apart. How ugly is that? I just, I don't want to read about it. I'm sure it's a very spicy, scintillating, scintillating read, but it's not for me. It's just not my thing. So today is the 25th of February and on Scribd, a bunch of new books have arrived. And so I, um, uh, I've been waiting for a killer's wife by Victor is it Mathos to arrive on script and it's on there. So I started listening to it. I'm really enjoying it so far. So hopefully this one won't be a DNF like the last two I tried to listen to. This book was recommended by a viewer. Her name is Alicia W and Alicia has been watching this channel from day one and I really appreciate her support. And she said that she thought that I would really enjoy this book. So I wanted to, Go ahead and read it and also give her a shout out and let Alicia know that I really appreciate your support. <clears throat> a couple of things about, sorry, I'm so stuffy. You know, I'm still getting over the, I think it's a sinus infection. I'm still getting over it, but I get them so easily. It seems like anytime I go out of town, I will get a sinus infection when I get home. So anyway, um, a couple of things about this book. It's a mystery, thriller, suspense kind of book, and it takes place in Las Vegas which I love. Um, it's the first book in a three book series called the Desert Plains series. And in this book, we've got Jessica Yardley. Jessica has an ex-husband who is in prison for killing multiple people. And she's got a daughter with him. And so there's a struggle with that, different ways that maybe her daughter is like her ex and just struggling with, I, I can't even imagine what that would be like, right? Having a spouse that, 
I don't know how much she knew about what he was doing, but just how traumatic that would probably be to find out that your husband is doing all these things or your spouse is doing all these things. Anyway, so he's in jail, they're divorced, but there's now a copycat killer and she's being asked to help out. And I haven't got far enough to know this, but just from reading the synopsis, it's putting her in danger by um, trying to help the detectives figure out who did this. By the way, did I mention? I don't think I did. She is an attorney. That's another thing that adds another layer to this whole thing. I think this is going to be really amazing just so far from what I've read. And I think maybe this will be one of those situations where I end up wanting to read the whole series. I'm really enjoying this author's writing so far. Well, hello, I'm back. <laughs> I've got a very playful Marty here in front of me in case you see his tail flying around. He's, <laughs> he's so silly. <laughs> Why are you so silly? <laughs> Do you want to come say hello? Do you want to come say hello? Oh. Do you want to wave? <laughs> Handsome kitty. Okay. I wanted to give you an update. I I ended up reading High School Debut by Kazun Kazun Kawahara and this is the first book in the um, high school debut manga series. It's about this girl who is in high school now and she's decided that she needs a boyfriend because that's what you do when you get to high school is you get a boyfriend. You have to not just get a boyfriend but fall in love. And Marty, stop playing with the stand. Try to talk to my friends. Your friends, our friends, whatever. So she decides she's going to get a boyfriend. She goes out. She's doing all these things to try to get attention. And the boys just aren't attracted to her. And so she hires her friend's brother to be her coach to help her get a boyfriend, to help her be appealing to boys. But I feel like most of us at some point or another have gone through something like this, feeling like we just aren't attractive to who we wish we were. Um, I just thought it was very sweet and fun and it was just such a nice escape and such a nice palate cleanser from some of the real heavy, deep, dark books that I've been reading lately. It felt really good to read something just so light and something that is just so it takes me back, but it's it's a different world today than it was when I was in high school, of course. Um, and it's just nice to not go into that carefree bubblegum zone. <laughs> uh, so I do recommend it if you're a manga fan and if this sounds fun to you. I've got the next two books in this series um, on hold at the library. So I should be reading them pretty soon. Then I remember, now this book actually came out when I was in high school. It's about this girl and her three friends who are all boys. They're best friends. They're together all the time and they all want to learn how to drive so bad. They want that additional independence that, well, if you're my age or older, you remember that feeling like you had to get your license. You had to move out of the house. You wanted to be independent. I know nowadays things are very different, but you know, back in my day, <laughs> back in my day, um, we wanted to be really independent or I know I did. I, I wanted to move out of the house when I was, I think I was 13 or 14 when I started really fantasizing about moving out, having a license, taking care of myself, nobody's telling me what to do kind of thing. <laughs> and I've just always been a very independent person. Anyway, so they're all feeling that way. 
And the girl in the book, her name is Cassie, she has her learner's permit, and no one else does, but they decide, even though it's not legal, to take uh, one of the boys' mom's car out, and they're all going to switch who's driving so they can teach each other how to drive. What could possibly go wrong, right? So they end up hitting somebody, and he dies, and they don't know what to do. They don't want to get arrested for killing somebody and ruin the rest of their lives. But they also don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> They're still at that age where they don't want their parents to find out that they were driving the car without it, without uh, having a license. <laughs> so, you know, back when kids were still scared of their parents. You know what I mean. We were all scared of our parents. <laughs> anyway, so... They just drive off and a bunch of really spooky, freaky things start happening to them from there. And in this book, it was just so fun to read it because taking place in the 90s, people still had a sense of humor. Um, we weren't so divided like we are now. And it, it just, it was just so refreshing. This was such a fun read. It was funny and it was creepy. I give it four stars. Easily. And it's got me wanting to really read more of my vintage books. More of my Sweet Valley High and my Arl Stein, my Christopher Pike. I finished... Oh my gosh, I forgot the name of the book. The murderer's wife? The killer's wife. This book was so good. It really was. And it was executed so well. The amount of research the author had to have done to write this book. I, I don't even... I can't comprehend that kind of research. It's been a long time since I've been in college and I didn't have to do that much research in college. But this book was good. And it... You know, so many books, if they're about a prosecutor or the main character, Jessica is a prosecutor in this book. And if, if books are about lawyers or they're about cops or detectives, it feels like it gets kind of dry kind of quick, right? It didn't feel like this, though. He sprinkled everything in in just the right amount. There wasn't too many court scenes. There wasn't too much lawyer talk or too much FBI detective talk or whatever. It was just the right amount. It made me um, hungry for more. It made me want to know more. It took place in Vegas. I think I mentioned that, but well, why do I always say that? It took place here in Vegas. I don't get to read very many books that take place in Vegas. If you know of a good Las Vegas book, tell me what it is, please. I want to I want to read it this summer or something. I I just love living here. I love reading about books that take place in the desert, even if it's not right in Vegas, but it's in the, in the desert. I'll probably love it. And that's everything for February. That was the last book that I finished. I decided to take a break last night and then start up again this morning. I did start listening to the next book uh, in the series that I was just talking about. I'll put a picture of it here. I don't remember the name of that one either. <laughs> it's my fault. I have had no sleep. I went to bed around 1230 last night and I woke up at 4 a.m. and could not fall back asleep. I normally take a nap after work because I'm a diva. And uh, I couldn't fall asleep. It's like I'm so tired that I'm wired or something. That's why I'm in a weird mood. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to start. Um, I started listening to, the, to that book. And so far, so good. I'm enjoying it, of course. I mean, I gave five stars. Five stars. Did I tell you that? I can't even remember. That's how tired I am. I gave five stars to the first book. I don't usually give five stars to thriller, mystery, suspense books, but this one was so good.
I might have a new favorite author here. So thank you so much, Alicia, for recommending this book. I'm blown away. Then the physical book that I'm starting today is In the Woods by Tana French. And I will be talking to you about what I think about this book in my next vlog video. Um, please feel free to let me know down below if you've read any of the books in this video or if you're planning on reading them or if you know of any good books that take place in Vegas or the desert. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night. Happy reading. Bye.